Good morning. Good morning, lovely people. Um, welcome to Yoga Solutions Live with me, Mark J. Aquaviva. Um, yes, ap apologies for my absence over the last month or so. I've, I've been a bit busy with uh, doing up my flat. And uh, yeah, it's summer, so, you know, <laughs> people getting on with their lives over the summer. So anyway, I'm here, I'm, I'm back, and um, yeah, ready to share some, some of my uh, yoga insights with you. Um, I, I had a question uh, a few weeks ago, but I can't remember it. So um, what I thought I would do today is just share my kind of go-to practice, the, the thing that I do when I want... I, I, I haven't got the time for a full-on practice, but I, but I want to feel better. And um, it's essentially, it's, it's leg extensions. And uh, I, I know a lot of people have uh, difficulty with leg extensions, they, you know, um, reclining leg extensions. Uh, they, and it's usually because they're in a fight with their hamstrings. You know, they're trying to straighten their legs and then they find it hard because the muscles behind here are getting in the way. And so, so you end up with a fight. And, um, uh, but f for me, it's what I do to relax. <laughs> I, uh, uh, it makes me feel good because it integrates uh, my arms with my legs, with my body and spine, and um, and you can do it. You can do it lying down. You can do it sitting on a sofa. You know, if you're sitting on a sofa, you can hang out and sort of allow things to open up. And um, yeah, so it's one of my favourite practices. And you know, I can feel like I've had a full practice in the space of 10-15 minutes from doing it. So I thought I'd share that with you today. Okay, so the, uh, yeah. Um, I'll illustrate the difficulty. The difficulties that people encounter when they're trying to do a proper yoga leg stretch. And it's usually because, first of all, they reach for their foot. And in doing so, they pull the foot close to their face and lift up to find it. It's not, it's, not, it's not the end of the world. But then you try and straighten your leg and you end up um, kind of fighting yourself because there's two conflicting things going on. You try to straighten your leg and you try to hold on to your foot. And uh, the result is conflict. And that conflict is experienced in your knee, your hips, uh, your back, whatever, right? So <clears throat> the the first part of the solution is is change your mind, change change your idea of what you're doing. You're not trying to stretch your leg. What you're trying to do is relax into support. Okay, that, that's that that's the kind of ultimate goal. Is uh, postures are meant to be supportive so that we can um, relax into them and, uh, yes, enjoy the benefits of integrating the body whilst being relaxed. <clears throat> so, uh, let's see. The, 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 yeah, if what you're looking for is support, so maybe sit with me because uh, this will illustrate the thing. If you take hold of your foot, right, what are you supporting? If you're supporting the leg, then you need a hand. <laughs> and and I, I, I warn you now, this approach is going to require strong hands and strong feet. Okay? But um, if, if what you're supporting is the leg, then relax the leg. Okay? And if you, if you relax the leg, and the weight of that leg is pulling you off center, then you're not supporting yourself. What you need to do is use your hand. So instead of holding lightly onto your foot with, with your hand like that, you hold onto your foot. And I'm using the outside edge because it's kind of easier. You hold onto your foot and a hand holding something doesn't reach. It, it's not reaching out here. It's hooking back. You hold onto it. And if you hold onto it using your wrist and your hand, then you can relax the leg into it. The other thing that you'll find yourself doing as you relax the weight of the leg into this 
um, strong hand is you'll probably feel your shoulder being pulled forwards, right? Which will make you tense in your neck, whether you notice it or not. You're looking, for support, you're looking to support this leg, but you're also looking to support yourself. So if you use this point of the thing you're hanging, you're, you're hooking over to support yourself, your shoulder will come back and bring you closer to the support. The result is that your neck doesn't have to compensate for the heaviness of the leg, you see? So if your arm, if your wing can hook back from the hand, which is away from you, holding onto the foot, then you can use, if, if, your, if your mind is in the right place, you know, if your intention is to find support, you are using this point of contact to support yourself. So it won't be you lifting your body and holding onto your leg. It will be you using your arm to relax from. Okay? And your wing will be doing some of that action. If you do it with your elbow, it, it's just it's tension across the front of you. It makes you collapse. If you use your wing and bring the wing behind you, then that by definition will bring you forwards of the wing. So your spine will be supported and your head will not have to hold itself in space. If you're doing this and you're relaxing the weight of the leg completely into the support and you're, you're relaxing your spine into the support that you're creating, you will find that your hand and wrist have to be very, very strong. So I'm just I'm just saying that so because if you if you're there having the experience going but that can't be right because that's really hard work for my wrist or my forearm or something okay it 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 just is muscles do what they do so that's how a hand holds a foot the the other half of this is how do you support yourself with the foot and for that um, I'm going to lie down. By the way, uh, you know, this is taking longer than I would take if I was doing my own leg extension because I'm explaining the different parts of it. But um, if, you, if you go through and explore each of these aspects for yourself, when they all work together, it makes life so much simpler. Okay, so uh, yes, one suggestion I have is instead of lying on your back with your legs straight, curl up a bit on the opposite side to the leg you want to extend. Get comfortable. Grab hold of the foot and just, just give it a little nudge with your wing so that you, so that you feel supported by the arm. Okay, the, the, the thing we just did. Now, if you want to support yourself with your foot, the way, the, the way you support with any limb, um, uh, when you're looking for a surface to support you, like if you're standing, you would you'd push out. Uh, the thing that people, that goes wrong with this is when you push out with the leg, if you're trying to stretch your leg, you're not looking for support, you're trying to stretch your leg. So the way you do it will be incongruent with the, the task of finding support. So if your hand can hook over the foot and you can just find a bit of support for your upper body from that hand by working your wing and holding onto the foot with your hook to wrist. Just a little bit of that. And if you forget that in the meantime, when we do the foot, that's fine. But the foot supporting you, it needs to move away into a surface. And you've got a surface. You've got your hand hooked over the foot. So you, the foot needs to move into that hand the foot itself needs to wake up and nudge into the support until it meets some kind of support. So I don't want you to straighten your leg. I want you to send your foot into the hand as far as it goes, where it feels like it's a surface that you can use for support. So using it will press you back away from it into the ground. 
But if you were if you were just if you were actually looking for support, you wouldn't keep pushing hard. You'd find that point of support and relax into it. So the foot is active, it's meeting the hook of the hand, and you're able to relax back from it in your shoulder so that the spine can be free. Now this won't it, it'll be hard for your leg, it'll be hard for the foot and if you have difficulty around the hip, you'll be gripping around the groin and all sorts of things. So here, here's another aspect of it. Once you've found support, you don't want to have to keep pushing. So the way, the way you relax into that support is by resting back from it. So the foot has found support and now you want to rest the leg in, a, in the direction away from you. The only way that that can happen is if the other half of this leg, the thigh bone, can drop back towards the ground. Like when you were using your arm for support, when the shoulder was pulling forwards, you, you weren't supported. But when the wing came back, you could use that point of contact for support. Same here. The foot is moving away from you into support, but the only way you can feel that support is if the hip can drop back away from it, and you have muscles that can do that. You have, um, some people will use their spines. It's not very comfortable, but it's, it's one way of doing it. Some people will um, use the purchase of that support. If you want a bit of a, bit of a push, you, know, you can use the purchase of that support to, to feed the thigh bone back into, and you'll feel all sorts of interesting sensations with that. You're trying to get that thigh bone to move further away from the foot back into the back towards the ground. So you have some muscles around the outside that do that and the foot uh, opening out into the hand will activate those muscles. Uh, another thing that can help the pelvis drop back and the thigh bone drop back away from the foot is inside of yourself, your belly. So this is where I kind of gathered my, my, my instruction to gather yourself together is useful. So instead of trying to push your leg away from you, which will give you neck ache and all sorts of things, you draw away from the foot on the inside, back and up, back and up inside the belly, away from the leg, leave, leaving that foot behind. And if you want to do something similar for the wing, for the shoulder, instead of reaching forwards, the ribs move back away from the hand towards the, the centre of things. So you're coming together in the middle, a gathering together. Now, if that restricts the breath, it's because you're, you're stiff in your spine. So the gathering together is something that happens to give you more space for that leg to open up, okay? The gathering together gives you more space for that leg to open up. But if you can relate the gathering together to the ground, which is when you use the ground for support, which includes this leg, the breath will arrive around you. It will arrive behind you and it will arrive in the space beyond that leg. That's the, that's the the feeling of it. So you're allowing the thigh bone to come back away from the heel. You're allowing the foot to stay with the hand in space. You're bringing yourself together into the center of the whole thing. You're trying to work out how to breathe with that, which involves using the ground. When you release the breath, you can let go of everything. You can let go inwards and you can let go outwards, away from you. So the weight of that leg can relax away from you in space, like it would if you were sitting, yeah? So, I'll do that again. The, the, the intensity of separating these aspects of practice is really quite exhausting. But when you put them together, it makes it quite simple. And the simple thing is, you take hold of your foot, you, you support yourself with that. The foot finds support from the contact. 
you gather yourself together back from that. You breathe using the ground. And when you release the breath, you release into your center as you drop your weight away from you. And what you're left with is a kind of balance of the weight of this arm resting back. It makes your spine light. The weight of this leg resting back means you don't have to put effort into straightening the leg. So if you find your kneecap pulling up, tightening, it's your, you're holding a posture. What you want is to basically engage in the direction that the leg would fall if you let go of it. Away from you. The result is that the support from this hand is transmitting through that leg into the joint to keep it in place. So there's no reason for holding tension around the thigh, around the groin, around the hip. There's no reason for holding any tension. The hamstring will have yielded because you're not fighting it. It's just there as kind of tensile integrity. You'll feel it challenged or feel it elongated, but you won't be holding tension in it. And if you've got that sort of structural balance where the weight of the arm hanging off the foot equals the support you need to relax the leg, then you can simplify into being in a leg extension where you let go of your weight into contact as you breathe. And you release into yourself, away from what you're doing, into your center, back from that leg, back from that arm, into your center as you release the breath. And in doing so, you can drop your weight away from you. And you will have opened out that leg enormously. And if you want to, whether you succeeded or not, you know, whether you managed to get there or not, uh, when you stop, if you just sort of lay out the legs and relax for a bit, maybe shake out any tension. And if you compare the sensation through the side that you worked to the side that you didn't, my guess is that that foot, that leg, that hip, there will be a confluence, there will be a flow through the whole of you, a sense of energised connection, if you like, from one end to the other. And in comparison, the other side will probably feel like a lump. <laughs> so, um, leg extensions. So when, when I'm just... I don't know, watching telly on the sofa or something. I rarely do that, actually. I normally sit, sit on, a, on a mat on the floor of some kind so that I can roll around. But um, the thing I do when I'm watching TV on the sofa and uh, I want to get into my body is the same thing. I just do it sitting and I've got a surface behind me on the sofa as opposed to the floor when I'm lying down. Same thing, I just take hold of my foot. The foot meets the hand. And the purpose is to rest back into myself, towards my centre, so that I can let go to breathe and let go back into my centre as I release outwards with the release of the breath. And I can, you know, provided your, your hand and foot are strong enough, you can relax into that for a bit, wait for the tissue to soften and open up. No tension in the thigh, no tension around the knee, no pull on your neck because your wing's working. And, and in this sort of relaxed state, you naturally try and find balance as you breathe and release. And it's the release of the breath that brings you back to your center. And if there's any effort involved in supporting this, the effort will be Trans, translated as strength in the muscles that get involved with releasing the breath. I don't mean push the breath out. 
I just mean you're in a natural balanced state and relaxing will bring you back to your spine and naturally the ribs, the core and other things will get involved without you having to push and pull. It will feel like you're relaxing your leg open. Okay. So that's, uh, that'll do, that'll do from me. <laughs> uh, it's nice to be back and um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. Feel free to share it around Facebook or anywhere else really. I, I, I might put it up on YouTube, this one. Um, yeah, if you want access to all of these sessions that I've done, you can become a silver member for less than a five or a month. And uh, there's a backlog of, um, a catalog of, I don't know, 100, 150, 200 of these uh, podcasts uh, on different subjects. Uh, some of them are repeated, but I never quite <laughs> talk about things in the same way. Um, if you want to get access to all of my workshops and uh, as, uh, and classes and the as well as these sessions and a, and a course, there's a course called the Ultimate Be uh, Anti-Stress Course. Um, you can become a gold member, and that incidentally gives you. Um, a free place, uh, a view-only place on, on my weekend workshops. So I've got one coming up this Saturday. Uh, it's not up on the website yet. I didn't need to do that today. Yeah, I've, I've got one coming up this Saturday. Every, every Saturday, I like to do a two and a half hour workshop, 10.30 to one, based on the needs of the participants. So whoever turns up um, can work directly whatever with whatever they're interested in on, on the day. And um, it's always interesting for everyone <laughs> because uh, we all have hips, shoulders, knees, elbows, and spines. So um, yes, do, uh, yeah, you can, you can uh, drop in for that as, or you can, you know, if you're keen, uh, get a membership and, and uh, turn up for nothing. <laughs> Okay. Uh, yeah, there's a platinum membership as well, where, which gives you an uh, interactive place, or you can just drop in for £27. Um, the, the view only place is 15 um, Yeah, that's this Saturday. What else? Well, that'll do for now. All right. I, I shall, I've been Mark Jack with Viva. I shall see you the same time, same place next week. Much love now.